Well, our thought for today is, in addition to the pandemic, this year we could also enjoy a plague of locusts that will be affecting us. Sounds like we're living in biblical times, right? Biblical proportions. We have today St. John's account of the resurrection. Yesterday we had St. Matthew's account. Today we're in John chapter 20, verse 11. Uh, Peter and John had just left the tomb, but Mary Magdalene stays. And she stays outside the tomb weeping. St. John's is the only gospel that tells us that Mary Magdalene wept. And she must have loved the Lord so much. And in fact, it'd be good to read the Song of Songs because there's that beautiful passage in the Old Testament that parallels to this passage in the New Testament. John is such a brilliant writer that he does the parallels between the woman and the Song of Songs that's looking, searching diligently for her beloved. And it says, Mary Magdalene was weeping and bent over to look into the tomb again. And what she saw this time were two angels sitting one at the foot and one at the place of the head where the body of Jesus had lain. As you know, this was Joseph of Arimathea's tomb carved right out of limestone, right into the side of the hill. And normally it would be um, steps going down into the tomb and a large chamber and on one side would be the slab. And that's where St. Joseph of Arimathea was going to be laid because that was going to be his tomb. Again, it was a, he was fabulously wealthy. So he was able to afford a tomb hewn out of rock. And, and yet he gave it to Jesus. And so the body of Jesus had lain on this slab. That's where Jesus came back to life. The linens, as we know, were still there in place. And now Mary Magdalene looks in and sees these two angels. And they ask her a, a question, which is really a rhetorical question. Why are you weeping? Notice Mary Magdalene did not believe in the resurrection. Even the apostles would not believe in the resurrection. Even when Mary Magdalene and others told them Jesus was risen from the dead, they would not believe. It's only when Jesus appears to them and shows them his hands and feet and eats with them, which we'll be hearing about later in this week, that they come to truly believe Jesus has risen from the dead. So the angels ask, why are you weeping? And Mary says, Mary Magdalene, they have taken my Lord and I don't know where they laid him. No belief in the resurrection. They, she just couldn't find the Lord. I remember back in the 70s going into many Catholic churches, we would always look for the tabernacle. We could never find Jesus. Remember that's when they were building churches with Jesus and a little you know, side chapel. We always felt they have taken the Lord. We don't know where they put him. Fortunately, Catholic architecture has come back to putting Jesus front and center in the tabernacle so we know where Jesus is. He's the very, very center of our faith. He shouldn't be relegated to some side area. Jesus is there. So now we know where to find the Lord when we go into a Catholic church, right there, front and center in the tabernacle. Well, then Mary turns around and sees Jesus there but she did not recognize Jesus. Jesus kept himself sort of disguised. And again, he asked the question, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And it's interesting, it says she thought he was the gardener, because as you know, the tomb was in a beautiful garden. And when you look at the gardens in scripture, we see the Garden of Eden, where man and woman were created, Adam and Eve, where paradise was lost. And then you had the Garden of Gethsemane at the Mount, the base of the Mount of Olives, where Jesus took upon himself the sins of the world. And now we have the garden of the resurrection. So she thought it was the gardener. This is John indicating that Jesus truly is the new Adam. Who was the first gardener? It was Adam. He and Eve were meant to take care of the garden. Now Jesus truly is the gardener of our souls. He wants to produce good fruit and holiness within us. So he is truly the gardener of our spiritual life. And then Mary says to him, sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him and I will take him. Look at the great love that Mary Magdalene has for the Lord. Now I'm sure she was a, a petite woman, maybe a, who knows how much she weighed, but she was trying to look for the G Jesus who probably weighed 175 to 180 pounds based upon the shroud. He was almost five foot 11. So it's pretty, um, I would say, uh, not realistic that she could be able to carry him away, and yet she was still looking 
for the body of her Lord. And then Jesus says to her, calling her by name, and Jesus knows each one of us and calls each one of us by name. We're not some sort of a, a general crowd to Jesus. He knows each of us by name. He calls us by name and we receive communion. He gives us communion individually to us really by name. So he says Mary's name. And then she realizes that a gardener would not know her name. It must be Jesus. She recognizes his voice and she calls him Rabboni, which is not just rabbi, it means my beloved rabbi, my beloved teacher. It's a word of affection. And then she must have embraced the Lord because he says, stop holding on to me. In other words, you must let go of me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. And then he tells her to go to my brothers. Again, the word here is brothers, not my disciples, not my followers, not my apostles, but they are my brothers. Even though they had abandoned me, one of them betrayed me, one denied me, I call them my brothers. And that, <clears throat> tell them I am going to my father and your father. See, God is Jesus' father by nature, since Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. And God is our father by grace and by adoption, that every one of us, because of our baptism, is adopted sons and daughters of God. So that's why we can call God our father, because we are adopted children of God because of what Christ did for us. He is the only true son of the father, but he incorporates us into his family as brothers and sisters of Christ through our relationship with him and through our baptism. Go and tell my brothers that I am going to my father and your father, to my God and your God. So Jesus elevates us to share in his own divine life and makes us adopted sons and daughters of God. So the Mary Magdalene runs back. That's why she's called the apostle to the apostles. She runs back and announces the good news. I have seen the Lord and reported all that the Lord had told her. So I think what we can learn from this gospel is the Mary Magdalene's great love for Christ. And we too should have the same love for our beloved rabbi, teacher, savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's pray to St. Mary Magdalene to give us that love of Christ, especially in the most holy Eucharist. I'll give you a blessing now with the relic of St. Mary Magdalene. Through the intercession of St. Mary Magdalene, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.